I'm terrified of not liking it. So... <laughs> everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with a challenge video I don't actually know what this challenge is called I did it a little while ago on my channel like last year and then I still did not know what it was called but I ended up calling it the read your bookshelf challenge I also have no idea who created this challenge but it was not me so if any of you know what this is called or who created it please let me know so I can give them credit but basically I asked you guys on Twitter for some coordinates between one and seven to represent my seven bookshelves and one to 100 to represent the books on my bookshelves. And with those two coordinates, I would go pull the book and then tell you guys a little bit about it. This time around, I actually got pretty lucky and got four books that I have read and one that I haven't read yet. So I can give like my full thoughts on four out of the five, but without further ado, let us get started. Before I start the challenge, I want to talk about a company called Tijin Eyewear. They reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out a few pairs of their glasses. So I got to scroll through the website and pick out a frame. I wanted a pair of sunglasses because it's summer currently where I am. Well, it's spring, but it's real bright. So I wanted sunglasses. So it came in this cute little package. I am obsessed with these. They are called Crystal Peach and I just think they're so super duper cute. I wanted a cute pair of sunglasses because the ones that I do have, they are very cute, but they're getting a little old, so there's like scratches all over the lenses and stuff. So I thought it was time for a replacement. So these are the ones I chose. Like I said, Crystal Peach. Very cute for the summer. And then they also sent me three other pairs of glasses, just because, I guess. They also sent me a pair of blue light glasses, which is actually really good for me because I am currently in online school right now so I spend the majority of my time staring at a computer screen so the blue light glasses are supposed to help my eyes not be as strained as they are so that was really exciting to show up in my package. I will definitely be using these a lot pretty much every day because all I do is schoolwork. And then they also sent me two other pairs that are supposed to to be anti-fog, which I think is pretty cool. But basically, when you put your mask on, which I don't really want to put it on all the way, but they don't fog. And it's the same with these black ones. They're also not supposed to fog up, so let's do the test. We'll put them on. I see no fogging, so that's pretty cool. I think I just got lipstick all inside that mask so I won't be using it but these are not the anti-fog ones because <laughs> they fog up a lot so there you go there's another demonstration that the anti-fog ones actually work because these these do not these are the blue light ones so thank you so much to Tijin I'll definitely be using those blue light glasses quite a bit since I spend all day on the computer so thank you so much to them i'm going to leave the link down below to their website if you guys want to get some pairs of glasses yourself highly recommend blue light glasses highly recommend sunglasses because they're super cute but now on to the actual video so the first book i'll start with is the one that i haven't actually read yet just because i feel like that makes the most sense in my head but the coordinate that i was given was 789 so my seventh bookshelf which is in the other room and the 89th book on it, which ended up being Magic Mutant Nightmare Girl by Erin Grammer. This is one that I actually recently received from a Twitter giveaway, but I think that the premise sounds pretty cool. This follows a girl named Holly who goes to visit a psychic one day. She is told that she is going to come into some kind of power, and by the end of the night, she has superhuman strength and she ends up fighting mutants. And so she joins up with this like ultra rich guy and his family of mad scientists and it's like them fighting monsters and I just am here for the girl power. It also came with this like really cute postcard that I think is really really adorable and it's just like such a like 
girl power vibe and I'm here for it. You know, we're just here for super strength human girls who fight monsters and don't take shit from men. So I'm very excited for this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The next coordinates I received was 525 and that ended up being the ravens by cass morgan and daniel page this one i gave four out of five stars i actually enjoyed it way more than i thought i was going to it's about a group of sorority girls who also so happen to be witches which i think is such a cool premise but i was not expecting a lot from this book because it's daniel page and i personally do not get along with daniel page's writing she wrote the dorothy must die series and i was not a fan of that she also wrote stealing snow was not a fan of that i think i gave those books like one and two stars so i was very hesitant but i thought maybe because it's it's like a group effort with Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. I would enjoy it more and I did. Like I said, four out of five stars is told in alternating perspectives between two of the witches, Vivi and Scarlet. Scarlet is like a legacy of this sorority and she has hopes of becoming the next like leader of the pack I guess and Vivi has never really felt like she belonged anywhere until she goes to this sorority and discovers that she is a witch yada yada. It's also kind of like a mystery because something very bad happened at the sorority a little while ago and Scarlett is trying her best to keep what actually happened a secret because it could ruin her chances of becoming the next leader. It was a lot of fun so I definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a witchy book it's a good one. The next two coordinates I received was 213 and that ended up being Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. I've come to find that I really like Wendy Walker's writing. She also wrote All Is Not Forgotten and I gave that book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I just think that she's a very good psychological thriller writer. But this one follows 15 year old Cass and her 17 year old sister Emma who went missing three years ago. Cass returns to her childhood home and tells a story about an island where the two sisters were held captive by a husband and wife. A forensic psychologist named Dr. Abby Winters spends more time with Cass and her narcissistic mother and she starts to realize that some of the details that Cass is telling in her story don't really add up so she decides that she's going to look further into the tale and see what's actually going on. This book just worked so well for me. I am a huge fan of unreliable narrators so I loved Cass as a narrator. I also am a huge fan, or not a fan, but I really enjoy learning more about personality disorders. So a whole book revolving around narcissistic personality disorder was just really interesting to me. The book is very twisty and turny. You can't really predict what the heck is going to happen. Like I had so many predictions and I'm usually very good at figuring thriller books out and knowing what's going to happen, but I had no idea what was happening in this. I really liked how the book was told in alternating perspectives between Cass and Dr. Winters. It was just a really interesting way for the story to be told and being able to see the story from a reliable narrator and an unreliable narrator was really interesting. I definitely recommend Wendy Walker's writing to everybody. I just think it's a lot of fun. The and next two coordinates that I was given was 414 and that ended up being Old Souls by Brian Mc. Donald and Les McLean. This is a graphic novel that I got so long ago. I think I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Chris who believes that he lives a very good life with his loving wife and his young daughter, but then he meets a homeless man named Jack who begins to talk about a life he once lived and that triggers some memories for Chris that he didn't know he had. So Chris enters the life of being a grave robber, which is the ability to to go back in time and relive the lives and deaths of his past self. Chris becomes obsessed with one of his past lives and his carefully crafted world outside of that life begins to crumble and it's like the story of that. So like I said, I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy this story, but the main character Chris kind of pissed me off for the majority of the book. He was very rude to his wife and just wasn't a very good person. I did enjoy the overall like 
message behind the book which was live in the present not the past it was good for what it was i also was not the biggest fan of like the lack of color like the blue white and black does work for like the eeriness of the story but i'm just someone who enjoys more color in their graphic novels but like i said it does work for what it was going for but yeah i give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars i don't think it's the best graphic novel that i ever picked up but it was enough for it to stay on my shelf, so there you go. Take that as you will. And then the final coordinates that I received was 146, and that ended up being A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which I was really happy that it ended up on this book because I've actually read this book as part of the series. It's the only one I have read, but I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I don't really think I need to go into detail about what it is about because everybody on booktube has read this book. I read it back in January, I believe, and I was like really disappointed in myself that it took me so long to start the series, but I was just so scared that I wasn't going to like it. But I am happy to report I did give it a four out of five stars, so. Have I continued on with this series yet? No, I have not because I am terrified of not liking it, so. <laughs> I am very intrigued with Kel and his backstory. I'm intrigued to know more, but like I said, I just don't want to not like the story, so I'm kind of hesitant to pick up the rest of it. So leave a comment down below and yell at me to finish it because I really do need to. All right, everybody, so that was the Read Your Bookshelf challenge. Like I said before, please let me know who created this or what it's actually called because I have no idea. Thank you to everybody who sent me some coordinates. That was really awesome of you guys. If you want to see another one of these videos let me know down below because I still have a lot of coordinates I can choose from from you all so yeah let me know down below if you've read any of these books what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video goodbye